Breaking tonight, thousands of Avista customers without power across Spokane. Most of those customers were originally concentrated in the Leita Valley area. About 1500 people were affected. This as we have surpassed the hottest temperature ever recorded in Spokane. That was 108 degrees. As of 407 today, we had 109 degrees. Good evening and thank you for joining us on Creme 2 News for the scorcher of a Tuesday. I'm Mark Hanrahan. It's good to have you here tonight. I'm Whitney Ward. So like we said, we have surpassed that 108 degree record which we knew isn't just a record for this date. Right. It's for all of recorded history in the Spokane area. That's officially out at the Spokane Airport. Let's get straight to meteorologist Tom Sherry. Tom, a couple of questions. Do you think we'll get even higher than 109? And are we going to hit that record again tomorrow? There's a chance we could get one degree hotter than the 109 degrees. And by the way, that's since we've been keeping records, which if you're curious, goes back into the 1880s. Again, 109 degrees. Now the official hottest ever. If we get up to 110, that's that's what I was forecasting earlier today, and then I think we may see 110 degrees tomorrow. So if we get uh, if we peak out at 109 today, there's a chance even tomorrow we could break that record with 110 degrees on Wednesday. Then we drop down to 103, which is still a record high on Thursday, below record high barely on Friday, and then we'll tie the record high on Saturday at 101 degrees. And as we mentioned before, Spokane's all time record high is 108 degrees. The excessive heat warning continues through July. July 4th, that's Sunday at 7 p.m. But look at the Portland area right now. Because of an offshore low pressure system, we are now beginning to see cooler air move into Portland. Okay, what does cooler air mean? They're still in the low 90s, but at least they're not in the 100s. They got into the 100 teens uh, earlier this week. We're at 108 degrees now out at the airport. Wind is out of the east northeast at 11 miles per hour. Check out your day planner forecast for Wednesday. 110 degrees expected tomorrow, and the house does not not cool down overnight, a low of 75 for the weekend. I've got 101 on Saturday and finally below 100 degree temperatures on Sunday, but we're still close at 99 degrees. So here to give us a more in-depth look at the numbers we've already reached uh, today is meteorologist Thomas Patrick. Thomas. Yeah, Tom, and just to confirm even what you were saying, we just brought uh, our own thermometer out here and it is also reading about 109, 110 as of this hour from our own outdoor weather center incredibly hot and yes those are all-time record high temperatures for Spokane but not just Spokane pretty much the entire inland northwest today setting new all-time record highs look at the uh, far right columns here the far right one is the all-time record high if you see the green check mark there those are now new as of today and yeah we had the uh, 108 degree reading in Spokane it was up to 115 in OMAC as well and now North Idaho as of this hour also starting to get in range as well pretty much only Coeur d'Alene is just shy at this moment their all-time record high stands at 109 degrees. We're at that 107, 108 mark right there. But relief is on the way. We know that, as you just mentioned, Tom, much cooler out west where those temperatures are now 20 to 25 degrees cooler today than they were yesterday. Meanwhile, it's about five degrees warmer on our side of the state. We'll have one more shot at re-breaking some of these all-time record highs for tomorrow before things slowly start to cool down in store for this weekend. We cannot wait to get away from the 110 heat. Mm, no question about that, Thomas. Thank you very much. And as the region deals with this record heat, thousands of people are still experiencing those power outages. We've been using the term rolling blackouts. You may have heard those terms to describe emergency situations in places like Texas or California. Yeah, but the blackouts here are not quite the same as those. Our Casey Decker joining us now to explain exactly why these blackouts are different and how they work. Casey? Mark Whitney, the most important difference to know here in Spokane, this is not a supply issue. There's plenty of power to go around. The blackouts are happening because physical components of the grid are literally overheating. In Texas last winter, freezing temperatures drove up demand for power, but the companies there didn't have enough supply to meet that demand. So they systematically cut power to neighborhoods on a rolling basis to lower demand on the system. And the idea was that basically everyone would share some of that burden. It was a similar situation in California last summer where high heat drove up demand. Again, the rolling blackouts were universal. They were intended to affect basically everyone, regardless of their individual conditions or power usage. 
both cases were a problem of not enough electricity to meet the demand. But that is not the case here in Spokane. We have plenty of supply right now. And in fact, demand isn't that high compared to demand in the winter. Heating tends to use up a lot more power than does AC. So if supply isn't an issue, why do we need blackouts? Well, when the power transformers in your neighborhood get too hot, they trip off the way a circuit breaker would to basically prevent them from exploding. And right now, they're getting too hot for two reasons. One, even though demand isn't high compared to wintertime, it's extremely high for June. A Vista has called it unprecedented demand. And using all that power basically heats up the inside of the transformers. Then, on top of that, the heat coming from the sun on the outside of the transformers. That stress is also unprecedented. The combination is causing some transformers to trip off. When that happens, it can take hours or even days to fix, so Avista wants to prevent that tripping mechanism from happening at all. To do that, they're watching all their transformers to see which ones are in danger of overheating. And when a specific transformer reaches a certain point, they're shutting it off for a shorter period of time, aiming for an hour or less just to cool it off. The idea, a one hour cool down is better than an hours long forced shutdown. Right, so this is not a scenario where everyone has to share some of the burden. The blackouts will only be happening in neighborhoods where those transformers are overheating. And that does mean some areas may see multiple blackouts, while some may see none at all. And the factors involved in that, they can range from how hot those areas are to how much demand they're creating in that area to how recently their systems were upgraded. In the newsroom tonight, Casey Decker, Crime 2 News. Good information, Casey. We lost power last night for about an hour or so. Well, those targeted outages will continue today. And as Casey mentioned, Avista says not a supply issue, rather a distribution constraint issue and the targeted outages are aimed at protecting the power grid. So again, it means that some people have experienced an outage during some of the hottest parts of the day. Crem 2's Ian Smay is joining us now live from Avista's headquarters with more on what customers can expect as we head into the evening hours. Ian. Yeah, good evening, guys. I'm actually out here in Spokane's Logan neighborhood, which was one of those neighborhoods that has been affected by Avista's outages. And I can tell you it is still very, very hot out here. And the slight breeze that has came and went has not been much help. Now, Avista held a press conference earlier today where they answered questions and talked about these so-called targeted outages. Heather Rosen Trader said the outages were put in place in order to alleviate those high amounts of strain that has been put on parts of the grid. Four transformers were targeted in total yesterday, and two of those were due to temperature alarms sounding, while the other two were due to higher than expected demand in areas where Spokane has experienced growth in the last few years. Now, Avista has said that about 24,000 customers experienced outages yesterday, and another 21,000 were warned of possible outages today. Rosen Trader says there was no heads up given to customers for yesterday's outages because Avista simply wasn't expecting to see those load issues on Monday. And had a plan for if if it was getting close to some of those capacity limits, then that we could proactively notify customers. But we weren't expecting that there would be outages. Um, but we had a plan in place. And again, things just happened so much more quickly than we expected that we weren't able to provide those proactive notifications. Rosen Trader also said if customers didn't receive a notification today before a power outage, they should check to make sure they have their contact information with Avista up to date. Places that have been or will be impacted, including includes parts of South Hill, neighborhoods in the northeast part of Spokane, such as Logan and Hilliard, and some places in northwest Spokane. Avista also says that parts of Spokane Valley near Barker Road may experience outages. Now again, these outages are part of Avista's efforts to try to alleviate the strain put on the electrical grid during this record-breaking heat. And they say if a transformer were to blow due to high heat and overheating or being overloaded, it could take more than a day to repair. So that'd be a day without AC or fans in this high heat. And Avista is also asking people to still continue to conserve power if possible. In Spokane, Ian Smay, Creme 2 News. All right, Ian, thank you very much. And just within the last hour, Eastern Washington Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers issued a statement about this ongoing heat wave and the importance of reliable energy and power. It reads in part, keeping the lights on is needed for a prosperous society, and it's key to lifting people out of poverty and improving our quality of life. She goes on to say it's not just about keeping the lights on right now in Eastern Washington and across the Pacific Northwest. It's also about keeping the fans and air conditioning on too. She was talking Talking about her concerns with the Clean Future Act. We'll have more on that as well as the Congresswoman's extended statement coming up tonight at 6. In the meantime, with this unprecedented heat wave, Spokane starting to see those targeted outages with temperatures way over 100 degrees. So we spoke earlier with Emily Brown from the Washington Utilities and Transportation Commission to tell us more.
right now, what we're experiencing essentially are just record temperatures. And when that happens, that means there's also a record demand for energy, not only as folks are trying to cool their homes, turning on air conditioning units, uh, but the heat outside uh, heats up the equipment as well. So what we're really seeing is just unprecedented and record heat that's impacting our equipment. So this, of course, comes after Avista turned off power for tens of thousands of customers already this week between yesterday and today. The system experiencing a new peak demand. They said again that equipment was at risk of failing amid this strain of high temperatures at the height of the outages. Yesterday, about 9,300 customers were without power. And if you are struggling to find a place to cool off this week, Spokane Public Schools is opening Regal Elementary and Sheridan Elementary as new cooling centers. Those locations will be open from noon to 3.30 through Friday and can each hold up to 150 people. The City of Spokane has also extended the hours for cooling centers. They'll now be open until 8 p.m. every day until July 4th. There are about 150 to 200 shelter spaces open system wide. The cooling centers are open at the Loof Carousel and Spokane Public Libraries. The Cannon Street Shelter also has some drop in day space available for people experiencing homelessness. And take a look at this. Washtock crews have started to see pavement buckle on Highway 195 north of Colfax. The road is open and crews anticipate that they will be able to start making repairs early Wednesday morning, they said. They ask that you please use caution throughout that area in the meantime. And if you'd like to know more about this week's historic heat wave, ways to stay cool or save some money perhaps on your energy bill, just text us the word heat to 509-448-2000 and we'll send a link directly to your phone. Well, today the Grant County Health District is reporting nine deaths due to COVID-19. These deaths bring the total Grant County confirmed COVID-19 related deaths to 134. Of these nine individuals who died, the health district says eight had underlying health conditions and eight had not been vaccinated. Local businesses also taking a power hit during this heat. We caught up with some owners today on how they're trying to adjust and keep up. That's coming up next.